Ready? Ready to go. Okay. Good evening. We'll call to order the January meeting of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee at 7.02. And we'll start with introductions. Brian, on the right. Yep, Brian Watt. Lisa Normand. Mike Mitchell. Brian Burke. Bob Burns. Scott Archer, staff. Okay. And the next item on the agenda looks like replacing our officers. <laughs> so we'll move or, or, right or renewing we'll, or renewing <laughs> or renewing well okay that comes up or rolling them over yeah <laughs> something like that okay so nominations are open for chair of PRAC for 2013 I'd like to see Mike I'd like to see you continue if that's Doable? Uh, I wish I could. Uh, I emailed Scott about this, and without getting into a whole lot of unnecessary detail, unfortunately, my travel schedule at work is has jumped way up, and from going from five or six trips a year, it's probably going to be more like 14 to 16 mm -hmm. or 18 trips this year. So, uh, you know, it's not that this job takes a lot of extra time, but I think it is really important that the chairman be here, and I just can't I, I mean I think I, I think I can still be here enough to be a valuable member and I want to keep doing that but I, I just wouldn't be fair to try to be chair because I'm just afraid I'm not going to be here so I have to decline okay do we have to take nominations or can we just ask for volunteers well you can you can do whatever <laughs> yeah. it's pretty informal. it's okay. relatively informal but then, yeah. then at some point you should We'll make a motion. Make happens. a motion to, to mm -hmm. you know nominate and then and then vote. But you can you can talk about it and kind of figure out who. Does anybody have any interest? That wants to there do we so. get out that way. It just have to be done by Scott. Well, uh, the bylaw your bylaws call for um, an election of officers at the first meeting of the year. If you didn't figure it out tonight, it wouldn't be wouldn't be the end of the world. But mm -hmm. You just have to know that somebody would have to keep running the meeting until you, until you do that. I mean, that's basically the function is just, and just so everybody's aware, the, the function of the chair is obviously to run the meetings, and uh, which Mike has done a great job, I think, this last year. And, here, here. and just kind of generally um, coordinate, coordinate with me on setting up the agenda each month, which is basically me sending it to you and saying, what do you think, or whatever, and adding some items or changing, and mm -hmm. then you know, possibly some things like when we, when we do the annual report to the commission is typically it's been the chair, but somebody else could do that. So it's um, yeah, that's kind of basically it. I'd like to uh, um, suggest that Don Smith be the <laughs> chair of this committee. I think. I mean, I've been thinking that for a while. Um, so I'm not sure what he said in the email after I, after I said that. I took a few names off the list. Yours was one of them, but uh, I, then I had to leave. So did he ever answer back on that email that I sent out? He did answer, but I can't remember. Well, he I'm not sure if he answered or, or if he had a statement before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. It sounded from his email before that. Yeah. He said, "Don't sign he, me don't, up." Yeah. Don't yeah. sign me up. He said, I'm not going to be there, but don't sign me up in my absence. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he could have his arm twisted. I don't know. He'd be a great choice. He would be a, good, he'd be a great choice. Well, that would be one reason maybe to delay that vote. But um, then the other person I was thinking of was Lisa. I've already done it before. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why you're being. Yeah. No, 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 not necessarily. You've done it as well, haven't you? Twice. Oh, gracious. Let's check with Don first. So anyway, and that that's really my opinion, and it's only an opinion. Is that, you know, I'm, I would I would like to, I would like to do it. I'd love to do it, but, um, I I feel like I'm surrounded by people that know more than I do. You know, you guys are smart, and uh, and I want to. I'd love to see somebody like Don do do this. You know, do that. Uh, and 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 his. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure he's got a desire. Um, but anyway, it would depend on his time and the timing. But um, yeah, I think other we should we should allow for other people to uh, have a chance to do that because I see a lot of qualified people. 
Right. My two cents, Scott. Uh, I think it should be somebody that has more experience than a first year person. Uh, that's where I am, first year person. And I, I think either the, the two mentioned would be great, either one of those two would be great, as far as I'm concerned. And keep in mind you need to also elect a vice chair, which is basically to fill in if the chair can't run mm -hmm. the meeting. So that's an opportunity, too, for somebody that isn't quite ready to step into that role but might want to think about doing that in the next year or something. So. Mm -hmm. You can certainly, uh, as far as process stuff here, um, you could certainly hold this over to the next meeting and then uh, you know, you ask Don or, or think about it more or whatever you want to do. I mean, there's, there's no problem in doing that if that's what you all want to do. I, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to, do to that. have yeah. him here before we make a final decision. I mean, okay, if so. that's, and you can continue for a month. A day? <laughs> An hour? I, I can continue. I, like I said, I, I don't know that I'll be here next month, unfortunately. But um, so the consensus then will um, we'll put this on hold uh, and we'll apply whatever appropriate amount of arm twisting we can to Don. Is that yeah. kind of the consensus? And then we'll go from there at our next meeting. Is there anybody here that would be interested in, in uh, the, the vice chair position? I would like to nominate Lisa for that. Anybody else would like to do that? Bob would. I would second that. You yeah, would second that. I'm okay with that. I, I just, but uh, that would be fine. You're sure? I don't. Bob, if you would like to, or anyone else would, it would be fine. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Over. sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was hearing it. It must have been. I'm, my voice must be loud enough. I think that one was getting it or something. Yeah. Anyway, so you would be I okay would, with that? I would be okay with that. All right. Okay. So just uh, I'll put this on the next agenda, and we'll you guys can okay. do a formal vote then. And okay. All right. Should we vote on vice chair, or should we wait? You're, you're welcome wait to, to do that. It's up to you. I, we have quorum here. I think. Let's might, go ahead and do that. Might not be a bad idea in that um, for some reason, since we don't have a vice chair at all right now, because that was Lynn and she's not on the committee yeah, anymore, oh. that right. if, if you're not able to be here, for example, okay. someone needs to good idea. do something up there. Good idea. So <laughs> that would be probably, yeah, that would be good. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it through while I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do, do we have a second for Lisa's nomination as vice Brian. chair? Second. Brian. Brian, yeah. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Lisa. Thanks. All right. Uh, we'll move on to approval of minutes from the November 29th meeting. Boy, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Everybody had a chance to look at yep. the meeting notes, minutes? And are there any additions or corrections? You know, motion about that to approve? I'll move that we approve the uh, November 29th meeting notes. Second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And we are on to citizen comments on uh, issues and items not on the agenda. And Scott, am I understanding that the agenda item yeah, here when for, we get there is for that? Yeah, they're here for five A's. For both. Okay. All right. So with no other citizens present, we'll skip that and we'll move on to five A, which is the Clackamas, Clackamas Park Ripple Effect Art Scope. Sculpture update. Jeez. <laughs> that's a, did you write a tongue twister in there on purpose? <laughs> yeah. I tried, yeah. It's there's delicious. a lot of syllables in there. So just uh, for kind of a reintroduction, and uh, Sam and Cheryl, come on up to the speaker table if you want. Um, so uh, Cheryl Snow and Sam Drevo are here. Cheryl's with the Clackamas County Arts Alliance. She's the director of that. And um, we partner with, just as a kind of an aside, we partner quite a bit with the Arts Alliance on a number of projects and things that are uh, positive for our community. Sam is involved um, with the We Love C Clean Rivers organization as well as is just uh, kind of involved in a number of different things, uh, s sort of focusing on the, the Clackamas and the Willamette Rivers in Oregon City and runs the kayak shop down at Sportcraft Marina too as one of his many ventures. So 
you'll um, recall that in uh, September at your meeting, the one that we had over at the swimming pool, um, uh, I know you were there, Cheryl. Were you at that meeting, Sam? Is that you? Okay. Sam wasn't there, so he might be new to some of you. Uh, and uh, Ben Dye, our artist who was selected for the project, and Elizabeth also from the Arts Alliance were there to present the the project, which uh, is is called the Ripple Effect, or that's that's how it's been um, um, kind of um, framed at this point. And it's a project that received funding from a grant and um, partnership with with the city and the Arts Alliance and the We Love Clean Rivers organization to do a um, a major sculpture at Clackamat Park. And so at that time, you kind of heard the initial proposal and reviewed it. And it was uh, uh, supported by PRAC, and uh, we agreed that at some point when we were closer to being to the point of you know we where we know what this is going to look like and a little bit more detail that we'd come come back and um, give you an update on the project. And so that's roughly kind of the, the last few months of work we've been uh, staff have been meeting with Sam and Cheryl and, and some others involved in the project. Uh, we've met a few times and. I think we've got a really neat project on the way. So I'm going to let Cheryl and Sam give you the rest of the update. And, um, and then if you have any questions, this is your opportunity for that. Um, uh, and uh, I think we're nearing the point of getting things into place in the relatively near future. So well, Thank you for seeing us again this evening. And, and Scott's correct. We've made a lot of progress since we've seen you last. and. I think I'll just let Sam just jump right into this and explain what the artist Ben Dye has in mind for the park. Okay, so I, I think the one of the major goals of tonight and sort of the process um, above and beyond figuring out exactly what <coughs> it's going to look like, this is sort of a mock-up model uh, of what he's created um, from the metal that we've pulled out of the, the Clackamas and Willamette Rivers. We, we pulled a, a bunch of cable. Um, that, that came out of, of uh, the Clackamas and then a bunch of metal bar and some other metal and um, so Ben is obviously an extremely talented artist he's come up with this as a model um, and the idea is that he's going to build this type of a um, salmon fish uh, at the scale of about uh, nine feet long and maybe two to three feet wide he's actually going to make three of them and that look like this and then he's identified a, a boulder um, that he's going to use as a foundation piece it's a, a pretty sizable boulder he was describing it as about six feet tall six feet wide and, and 10 to 12 feet long um, and and one of the most challenging you know parts of this was was citing the location of the sculpture so I think at this point Collectively, we've we've um, come up with the entrance to Clackamas Park as the as the location, and we had Larry out there citing the utilities and figuring out today, you know, sort of more or less the the layout. Um, but we've sort of come to to make sure that that's an acceptable location um, for for this type of a sculpture, and just give you an idea as to you know what what it's going to look like, uh, kind of sort of. Based on this model, and uh, um, I mean, I think that's that's pretty much where we are in the process. Um, we've been working with staff and, and um, jumping through the hoops, and I think we're on schedule to do more or less an Earth Day unveiling <laughs> of the of the sculpture, and that's and we've worked a little bit with the high school as well, who who redesigning the RV kiosk, mm -hmm. and we're going to have. Um, a little bit of information about our organization and some of the service work we've done um, at the at the RV kiosk and trying to tie it in a little bit with this project. So it's exciting to sort of bring those those projects together because they're also working on a on a great one. And so conceptually, let's just talk a little bit about the site because that was still in question when we talked with you in September. So, like Sam said, we've had several meetings with staff here at the city, with the artist, of course, and with me and my Arts Alliance staff. And we ended up in full agreement that one of the functions of this artwork should be as a signal entry into the park, so kind of a beacon, a landmark, you are here. And then that combined with the fact that the city had already been thinking about 
doing some some work, some renewal work around that um, the entry area into the park. It made sense to to sort of combine those efforts and um, capitalize on the um, on the cost efficiencies for doing both simultaneously. Is this a, is this directly across from the skate park, essentially, or where? Okay, all right. It's like you know where the flagpole is. Mm -hmm. That uh, that that's going to be removed. Um, I believe there's some concrete under that. They're going to do a little bit of excavation so that the the boulder, which is a really mm -hmm. large boulder, mm -hmm. is going to sit down in in the uh, you know in the landscape and then. You know, they're talking about maybe some river rock around the side. I think it's it's going to make for a really neat entrance into the, mm -hmm. into the park. And we're also talking, I think still on the table, is the conversation about um, prying some added value out of the artist who has interest in, and we have interest in, doing some... Um, some name identification, a, a signage, or something that um, some ability to use the artist's skill to create a sign that um, that has a sense of place and um, and specificity rather than just simply a sign. Did you say there'd be three of those models? Yeah, three all the same size, the nine feet by whatever. Yeah, it sounds like. Just with the nature of this, it's mm -hmm. it's malleable a little bit. So mm -hmm. he's gonna sort of probably work with the contour of the rock um, to to create the installation. And, and yep, he's talking right now about three. One of one of the one of the things one of the goals of the project was was to have create some scale and to really make a, a piece that that captures your attention. And I think it's. <coughs> I think it's right on track to, to do just that. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's 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 major with our organization. You know, we've been doing river cleanups on the Clackamas for ten years and pulled out fifty thousand plus pounds of trash. And, um, this is really going to be kind of a testament to to that work because there's been so many organizations that have been involved. And in they have a rock already selected. Yep, the rock has really? been identified, and oh. we, yep, mm -hmm. we've got a a picture of it, and there's going to be some excavators involved and. And moving it, it's going to be quite yeah, a challenge <coughs> moving the process. process. <laughs> it's quite large. Will there be a, a plaque or some information talking about, hey, this is pulled out of the river and where it came from? And yeah, that's a, that's kind of a, a major strand throughout the project from the start. We're still discussing where the appropriate place for all the interpretive stuff could be. One of the possibilities still on the table is continuing to work with the high school students that are creating the kiosk and because mm -hmm. there'll be some of course some natural protection for that there but we haven't come to a firm decision about the placement but for sure that's a huge piece of this because the point of course is to demonstrate the work that we love clean rivers has done yeah, the, and I, th I think uh, the <coughs> committee here is familiar with the 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 current pro year's project of the the high school construction group that they presented was the to put in a new kiosk at the at the RV park and the um, the high school uh, construction class kids met with us at one of our meetings on site a, a while back where we talked about having at least one of the panels on the kiosk you know to be kind of a, a permanent interpretive piece for the for this project which ties in really nicely with everything that's going on so great sounds great yeah last time uh, where were we we were at the we were at the pool weren't we yeah mm -hmm. I uh, had a couple of questions I just didn't ask because I knew it was your our first meeting with you but is there is there a, a going to be a barrier of sorts around it because this is going to be attractive it's you know and it's going to look climbable to a lot of um, people I've got um, five climbers in my family. <laughs> I wouldn't let them do that. But uh, is there is there a, plan, a planned barrier, or what what would what would prevent um, kids or adults? <laughs> well, it's a really great question, yeah. and it comes up with all of our public art projects. It, every one of our commissioners, every one of our artists who are commissioned to do a project are required to warrant against um, negligence and vandalism to the extent that that's humanly possible. But what that means in terms of this project is that it will um, sustain the ability to 
play with it, to climb on it, and to some degree, the way he's designed it encourages tactile engagement because one of the things that was important to us is to help explain visually and as well as, um, as, as intellectually what the work of reclaiming objects really can, can result in. So um, we wanted people to be able to touch the piece. We want people to feel invited to come close to it. So for that reason, um, we selected Ben's concept because we knew that he had the experience and the ability to perform to that capacity. Then beyond that, the concept of placing it, as he came up with it, placing it on a really large, more than rockets, it's more like a boulder, boulder. Um, <laughs> will add not only some, some scale and some visual interest, but it will likely, um, if not discourage climbers, you can't ever discourage climbing completely, but it might, um, it might engage at least the young ones climbing only on top of the boulder. So, um, so that's a possibility. Of course, we don't guarantee anything, but we know that any, any object placed out in public will be engaged with by members of the public. However, having said that, and even mindful of all the possible risk and liability, we do not encourage placing barriers and fences around any public art mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. The piece itself, if it's successful, has to be able to have a life of its own on its own in its environment. And pardon my ignorance, but Earth Day is when? April? Uh, it's mid-April. 14th? Man, I think it's You're the twenty first. I think it's the twenty first. So. <clears throat> and I think our goal is to have it up even kind of prior to that. Before then, yeah. So wow. we're, we're going to try to make sure it's up before the Pioneer Festival. And yeah. there was some concern there with getting it up at a time when, and it's all going to probably the installation will happen in a day. So it's not going to be a long, drawn-out. It's all being built at Ben's studio mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. prep, 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 and then in a day it's like mm -hmm. the excavator. You know, it's not going to be a major excavation, but, um, you know, it's going to all kind of happen. And then we'll probably have a sort of an unveiling, uh, you know, event that sort of brings people together and certainly invites the thousands of people that we've had help on the Clackamas because there's a lot of people that are tied into the event, and this is going to be, be a, a really nice, uh, you know, just... Uh, piece of art is is this being planned coincident with our cleanup day too and we, we, so, yeah. we just started we start we started to look into that because yeah. originally I wasn't sure how long it was going to take but Ben really seems to have his hands wrapped around everything that's going to happen and it, it seems like we're going to be um, nice and punctual with the installation so I think it certainly could and so we're, we're looking into that right now. Yeah. We just found out about those we're dates. We're just talking and, about that. And yeah, we've we have got, a pretty big audience for that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be great. The goal is to get the community involved mm -hmm. as right. much as possible. Yeah, be great. The Oregon City community and then everybody else that, mm -hmm. you know, that comes from outside the community to come. Um, and there would be food there, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll make sure it's good. <laughs> we feed volunteers at the cleanup event. Yeah. Yeah. What's, do you know what the date is on that? I, guess? I don't. Uh, yeah. I could find out. It is also in April because it's kind of right linked around. into Earth Day as well. That would be awesome right. to have an event like I that. I think it's yeah. the 21st. I think it's the Monday is Earth Day, so the weekend before that. So right from the start, our vision was that this would culminate in a huge community-wide celebration because there's a lot of overlapping intersections of audience for this, that all, all the folks that Sam just described from, that are connected to his organization. Of course, we want this to be a general celebration for everybody in Oregon City, but from the, the Arts Alliance perspective and the county-wide um, constellation of public art, this is another reason to celebrate the public art assets in the county. So we see this as being another fabulous event in Oregon mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. and it, won't be pouring down yeah. raining. And I, and I do believe that this will be done before the high school project. So the high school will be able to get a little, yeah. get a little steal their thunder. excitement yeah. about, you know, getting their project done. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> well, maybe put that one on there, on the top of their uh, 
structure <laughs> to draw the two pieces together. Well, that's that's truly yeah. one of one of the yeah. ideas. He's creating three of them, and, and yeah. we want to have some way to have a visual connection. Mm -hmm. I think, like Sam said a few minutes ago, one of the real challenges in this project was addressing scale. The park is huge. There's a lot of activity. The, all the mm -hmm. RV. The RVs themselves as objects are huge, so to have any impact, visual impact, is quite challenging. Mm. So Ben's idea and then the location where it is will help, but to be able to make that linear sightline tie is important. Mm -hmm. Great. So unless there are any other questions or concerns, no. we're marching forward. Great. And Keep up the good work. Yeah, yeah these, these right. folks have done good. a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cheryl. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to part B. Or no, uh, uh, what? A, A, A. A, A. The second, the, we'll move on to the second A, the Parks A, A, Open yes. House. Yes. And, and Sam, maybe, if you wouldn't okay. mind, maybe you could listen to this, because just as I'm thinking about what you do and where your business is located, that it, it kind of seems like Clackamat and river activities might be a, a great piece of that day. What what we're talking about, Sam, and I'm just throwing this at you, I apologize. Um, the, the group feels that there's a lot of park resource in the city of Oregon City that an awful lot of people in Oregon City don't know even exists. And we're just starting to plan uh, or consider a, a park, like a parks open house day, uh, sometime probably early summer and to uh, identify a group of, of parks, but not all of them, but maybe where we would have you know, a table set up and, and people explaining what's special about this park and maps of where all the parks are and maybe a geocaching thing. And I could see it at John Storm and Clackamat, some water-related things um, that your group and your business would, would be a great part of. So I just kind of wanted to get that on your yeah, radar. Absolutely. I mean, I'm appraised of of the triathlon that's potentially going in the cove. Last year we were part of the, the fun athlon and the bridge reopening celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a big um, interpretive piece to that on, on the bridge with regards to this project. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the more the merrier. And I mean, rivers are a great resource and I, I would say an underutilized research or mm -hmm. resource here in Oregon City. Mm -hmm. And that would, that would be another day that would expose could expose people to the sculpture that didn't get to the unveiling. Absolutely, yeah. And we're, we're looking at, we've had the, as far as the cleanup is concerned, we, we originally started it having, because we had kind of a celebration afterwards, we originally had it at Carver Park and then we moved it to Barton Park for several years and now there's a lot of talk about actually trying to bring it to Clackamas Park. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just, you know, it's the second week, second Sunday in September usually really nice weather and, and you know, we have like 450 people last year came out and helped so you know that's just another I, I love Clackamas Park I love Confluence Confluence Parks mm -hmm. it, it definitely is, is a, a special place and anytime you need any paddling support in that area that's easy <laughs> okay so all right just yeah we'll keep you in the loop yeah, on that Okay, so we are talking about the Parks Open House event. Any, I don't really have any other reports other than just what we've talked about before. So yeah. kind of keep that conversation. I think the idea is just keep this on to keep it going, uh, mm -hmm. keep the conversation moving ahead. I, you know, with what, with everything that's going on at Clackamat, because now well, what's what's the high school's time frame? Uh, well, hopefully by the end of the school year. I mean that that's that's their, you know, they've got to complete things by the end. Okay. So that would be another thing that could be a part of a, you know, Clackamat being part of that. Um, another one that was, uh, that I was thinking of would be a thing that I don't think a lot of people know about is Singer Creek and the uh, Frisbee golf that's there now, that the Eagle Scout project. And maybe there's something that, I don't know if there's a group of... Parking's not the best there. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's the biggest problem with that park. It's a beautiful asset. So maybe it wouldn't, you know, maybe we do it, could we do a, maybe a little, one of the little shuttle buses from, uh, which one's just up the hill on uh, the other side of? Rivercrest. Yeah, Rivercrest. Mm -hmm. Rivercrest. Maybe a little shuttle bus from there down or something. I don't know. Just 
Just a thought. <clears throat> Just a thought. And then um, uh, Chapin, if we could get some of the sports teams involved, because that I mean that park is kind of centered around youth sports in a lot of ways. Just to kind of let my, you know, my thought is just to let kind of people know all the different kind of activities that are available in our parks, and maybe some of the more hidden ones that people don't know about. So I like that. Maybe I was thought <clears throat> thinking a little bit like maybe Glen Oak, even though it's not developed, people don't know that that's a city-owned mm -hmm. piece of property that is the city's future forever. I, I don't know. Maybe you could have a little something there, just yeah, so people. There's a lot of development going on in that area, a lot of new development in the last five years. Uh, it's totally changed that area. Yeah. So. yeah, absolutely. Potentially with the Glen Oak idea, we would be um, at that point in time into some of our public process with the master planning. I'm not sure where we'll be exactly in that time frame, but I think it could spark some good interest. Though. Have some discussion around that. Mm -hmm. And I know that's on the neighborhood association's radar screen. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Any thoughts, Brian, Lisa? Any? I apologize. Your, I don't have any. Your your favorite hidden gem in our park system that more people I, should know about? I think that um, that but one of the things you mentioned, Mike, is like a shuttle, and I was thinking about that too. You you don't have to be you don't have to be. Uh, just at one of the parks, you could be at multiple. You could have multiple locations with multiple things going on. Mm -hmm. It would take it take you know with more moving parts, it would take a lot more, you know, to put it together. <clears throat> but you know, if you want to if you want to showcase certain parks that, for instance, people don't normally see or they don't get out as much, and that maybe they don't know, maybe they are unaware of uh, the different parks or types of activities they they could uh, you know have fun with their family. Um, you, we might think about multiple locations and having a, some sort of a shuttle because uh, you know the center of gravity I think we all are thinking about is Clackamas Park it's you know it's I think the most well-known probably um, but there are so many other opportunities uh, to, to for people to see other locations and then maybe have other you know, you might have some. Uh, what is that? What is that frisbee game called? Uh, um, ultimate frisbee. You might have ultimate frisbee at Rivercrest Park or some some event at Rivercrest Park, and uh, you know something else going on at a different park. I, I, you know, when we were in Atkinson Park, I was thinking, man, I wonder how many people know that Atkinson mm -hmm. Park exists and what a beautiful place this is, and it's just right on top of this bluff. Literally, you're you're looking over the bluff. Almost just to the just to the south, I guess south um, west or east, whatever. But you know, you've got a <clears throat> you've got a big parking lot there by the old campus, the Oregon City campus, and there's you know, depending on uh, what we come up with, you could have people walking down Jackson to Atkinson Park, and we you know the pool is arguably the the number one. Facility location, you know, over a hundred thousand visits a year. So, you know, you might want to work that in so people, you know, that haven't seen the upgrades, the facility, that type of thing. So, if you had, if you had a, if you had people parking at the Jackson campus, you could have, you know, feasibly, I think, people walking up to Atkinson Park and then also close enough to the pool. Um, a lot of people probably don't even know the promenade is a park. So I mean, there's there's different things you could do from there, or from the, the next level of Oregon City Rivercrest Park, which is a beautiful park, just lots of open area, and you could plan several different types of games, football or ultimate, or you know. And um, I was thinking maybe I mean you know guys my age they they hear softball and they want to give it a try, you know they haven't played for 20 <laughs> years, and um, <clears throat> So potentially, maybe at Chapin Park or you know another park, we could have a game of softball, a friendly game of softball, get some teams together and something like that, mm -hmm. um, some family events. But it, yeah, I just I mean, there's a lot of things in my mind. But the the more spread out you get, the the logistics of the whole thing is going to get more and more difficult. Right. So if we have maybe three locations, maybe a central one and then a couple of satellite areas or something like that, we could 
When you think about difficult, though, that made me think of getting the service clubs involved and having each club adopt an area and, mm -hmm. and be responsible for the activity in that area. So whether it's a softball game at Wesley Lynn or you're doing a hike over at Kanema Park through Metro prop land, you could get Rotary, Optimus, yeah. um, Sir Optimus, Lions, any of those yeah. folks to take on one park and one activity, which would be kind of fun. Yeah. It's a great idea. I think, you know, one thing, too, we could do is uh, – is like a passport system, especially if there's something involved around kids, where they get a stamp at each park, yes. and then they could wherever we come up with our central location, bring that back, and they get something, I don't know a free day of swimming at the pool with other little whatever little goodies or something we can come up with. Uh, yeah, I like that too. That's a good idea. Have we done this before? No, this no. would be a first time thing. It was just kind of mm -hmm. evolving out of some discussions mm -hmm. that we've had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of great people. ideas. You know, one thing that's really interesting about the uh, Oregon <coughs> City Parks is that they're they're so different. We have the swimming pool, which is a great facility. We've got Chapin has four baseball diamonds and soccer fields. Uh, Rivercrest, which has a, a tennis and basketball. So we probably want to be sure and include all the different kinds of, uh, of uh, sites so there's a diversity people can see that there's yeah. not just one but there's if, a lot mm -hmm. of different like Lisa's saying right. if we involve these other groups you might have you might have you know a two on two tournament basketball tournament or something like that you know mm -hmm. hopefully not too many twisted angles <laughs> <laughs> it's always possible so right. can I jump in and make a couple of comments um, yes uh, it, this is a great idea, and um, I think if we could pull this off, it would it would be really really neat. Uh, just a couple of thoughts. Um, uh, every July is is designated as National Parks and Recreation Month. We've done this um, proclamation uh, type of a thing that I've usually bring to to Prac and share with you, and then the commission does it where the mayor reads it and declares it Parks and Rec Month, and it's part of the mm -hmm. national thing with the, the NRPA organization that we're part of. So, you know, tying it into that, in fact, a lot of a lot of the communities that do this proclamation will do events like this, you know, to try to kind of, you know, bring more attention to that. So, so there's that part of it. Um, so maybe look, I don't know, if, you know, we haven't really pinned down any dates or, or any certain months that we're going to do it, but um, that might be an idea is to do it during July so it ties in with that and we can actually call attention to that. Um, I I think something that is really going to be key to this is if if, if we really <coughs> want to do this and really are going to be able to pull this off and be successful, it's going to take some help uh, from some volunteer um, organizations or individuals. I think Lisa just made a great suggestion about uh, the service clubs we've got a number of those in our community there might be other there might be others that that might want to jump in and help us um, but uh, you all know the the challenges that we have as a department with our staffing and then especially being during the summer we are we're running full bore with the limited staff that we have we're you know up uh, over over our heads and programs and swim lessons and you know parks maintenance and uh, running summer concerts and you know those those types of things so that's kind of a concern that I've got is how how to how to pull this off in it and then uh, the next item down on your agenda there and I apologize for the the typo on the having those misordered when I when I had to redo the agenda quickly I I didn't uh, format it properly so um, but your next one down there the the OCTA event that's in July kind of both um, possibly causes a little bit of challenge even more in, in terms of putting on events but also maybe is is another way to tie into this as well so it could be looked at as sort of a part of this whole thing um, well I'll talk about that more specifically in a minute here but uh, anyway just kind of Throwing in a little bit of my two cents on, on some of that, um, but uh, definitely got to keep 
keep in mind the workload that we're talking about and how we're going to pull that off because it we're pretty maxed on on the staffing and not to say that we w won't support this but just being realistic we got to figure out how we can do it successfully because we don't want to we don't want to do something and then not be able to do it well so good points that, that is the more great ideas that come up the harder it is to pull off because it gets <laughs> yeah. It's infinitely more complicated. Easier to start small maybe this year and yeah, yeah. build right. upon. Yep. I think you're right. Two or three spots. Yeah. And then, you know, maps of where <coughs> all of the park resources are. It, it, other than the one that is in the trail news each time, is there any kind of flyer about the, all the park locations like the trail flyer? Um, no, that's that's basically it. At, um, once upon a time, we had a little kind of a paper fold out or something that wasn't was really pretty low quality, so mm -hmm. it wasn't worth continuing. So I've talked about that and thought about doing a you know a nice you know three fold brochure that you can pull out and have that. That's something that's on our kind of radar screen at some mm -hmm. point. It takes some resources to do that. You've got to got to design it and then the printing cost but I'd like to see that happen we don't have so really we don't have that right now we have yeah we have what's in the trail news and that that's we have that that's printable just individually and we've in fact we put that in some locations at some at, you know different points in time but for the time being that's that's really that's really it yeah okay. any other comments on that item and so we'll move on to the OCTA event. Give you Scott. Some, yeah, catching up here. <clears throat> so uh, we've talked about this previously, but I wanted to uh, put it back in front of you again, just make sure you're aware. Um, I, I believe I've informed you about this event that's, that's coming this summer. Um, the Oregon California Trails Association, which is um, is is called Octa uh, is the is the short version of that. That's a national uh, organization which uh, is it, it, it basically they're uh, a national organization that is focused on the the Oregon Trail primarily and not just here in Oregon but you know from its starting point all the way across um, the the United States to to its point here and you know where it branches off into California. This organization has an annual conference in different locations every year, um, and it's in, in points that are along at some point of the Oregon Trail. Um, and this this particular year, they're having that conference in in our region. <coughs> it's kind of in Oregon City, but it's it's being housed in Clackamas at the the Monarch Hotel. Um, uh, a lot of the folks that are the local members that are involved in, in bringing it to, to Oregon City and to Oregon um, are, are specifically are from Oregon City, so they've got a lot of interest in getting people to come here and, and to visit our site at the end of the Oregon <coughs> Trail, so there's, there's a focus around that. Um, the event takes place uh, the, the week of July 21st, so July 21st through that entire week. Um, the uh, the 26th is the Friday, kind of that's the end of the week, and it's the culminating event. They'll be doing various things where they they do um, seminars and lectures um, <coughs> at at the hotel at the conference site. They do uh, tours all over the place. They'll be all over Clackamas County, and for example, they go up to the to the Barlow Trail on Mount Hood. <coughs> uh, they'll come into Oregon City and do tours of our historic. Uh, museums and homes and and they'll do that in other places as well that have kind of local significance um, what uh, uh, the, so this organization is its own its own entity and they'll be doing that um, uh, when when it was announced that this was going to be held here they're, they're, and by the way they're going to be they don't know for sure until the registrations occur, but there will be between three and five hundred people at this at this association uh, conference, and and um, our city would like to try to welcome those visitors from all over the the United States, actually and beyond the United States. There are international folks involved that come into this. So, um, what the city 
commission uh, determine actually and put it in they put it in their goals one of the objectives in the city commission's annual goals that started last year and is carrying into this year is that um, they want to make sure the commission has said we would like to make sure that we welcome these folks and we do you know some kind of a of a cool event in culmination with their kind of wrap up event on that Friday, July 26th on that evening. So, um, and the commission has actually dedicated some resources to sort of throwing a party. And there actually are two functions. There are two purposes. One is to to welcome our visitors and and make, you know make sure they get to enjoy our community. And um, and then the other part of it is to uh, have a have a community wide celebration for Oregon City to come and to join in uh, and do something and this is all going to to take place at the end of the Oregon Trail site, which as we know is in kind of a state of flux and we 're still working through that so we have that kind of complicating uh, issue but we're we 're trying to work through that um, so uh, what has kind of been outlined roughly is that um, this this sort of wrap up kind of the finale event will be uh, from six to ten o'clock uh, p.m. on Friday the twenty sixth of July, and it'll be at the end of the Oregon Trail site, mostly outdoors. Hopefully, weather will cooperate, um, and the association will be doing the, the Octa group will be doing a a salmon bake uh, for their members, and that's kind of their closing dinner thing. And I think they do some you know speaking and different things. Um, they want to do some possibly like some Native American in interpretive dancing and and have some of that kind of stuff going on and then um, you know have some while dinner is going on maybe have some background music like the old time fiddlers group that are kind of a local uh, group that do some different things and, and some of that type of stuff then from 8 o'clock on basically from 8 to 10 p.m. until or until we're done if it goes a little bit later is sort of the city taking over and doing the, the entertainment uh, for the evening and, and the idea being that we would bring in a, a, a musical group that would draw you know have a, a pretty significant draw so it would be uh, something that the visitors that are at the Octa event would enjoy but that also we would encourage our community to come and have a, a celebration at the end of the Oregon Trail and do uh, something you know have a musical performer that would, that would be somebody that you know would have kind of a, a following in the area and would actually uh, get get folks exci excited to come in. So kind of like a bigger version of our concerts in the park at the end of the Oregon Trail site. Uh, so we're we've been directed by the, the staff have been directed by the commission to to put this on, and and we have like I said we have actually been given some resources to do that. So we're working on that, and in conjunction with that, maybe doing some things like having you know um, the face painters and the uh, you know the, the balloon artist or something for the kids and do some fun kids activities and 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 have a, a you know a really good musical artist uh, in talking with the, the folks from Octa we're kind of honing in on a um, somebody with a little bit of a country western kind of a flair but more like the modern country the country pop or whatever it's called and looking at artists that would so that kind of the crossover country artists that would have a, a draw for a lot of different musical interests or whatever and then you know, maybe having a dance floor where people could could uh, could dance and and, and do that, some of that type of stuff. So that's we've been working on that. Um, it's the the date is for sure. Uh, we're in the process of getting an artist um, booked for the event. We've got some pretty good ideas on that, um, and just wanted to make sure that, first of all that you knew about it. We're going to definitely want to be putting the word out. It's you know, it's partly an Octa event and it's partly a city event, and we're going to be doing our part. Um, but we're going to be making it a, a fun community-wide event. Um, having that conversation uh, about the the Parks Open House event is this does this tie into that somehow? Do we make it part of that, or maybe it's a different <coughs> date, but it's still sort of a a piece of it or something? And 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 again. Uh, being that we do this July uh, Parks and Rec Month proclamation, it, it also ties in with that. So it's kind of a, a report, but also just putting it out there. If if Prac has any ideas, if you know, if you've got any thoughts of things that we might uh, add to the event or do, uh, if, if we want to have, you know, if 
Prac even wants to do something in, in conjunction with that, you know, that would that would be open uh, to, to doing so. We haven't, nothing is in concrete at this point. So, so that's that's what's going on on July 26th. We're going to be putting on a, a, a big party. Uh, it's the whole week, not just the 26th. Right. The, well, what's all week is the is the Octa conference, and they'll be doing a number of things. Now we're not. Per se, we're not involved with that. They're, you know, we're supportive of it, and some of it will be going on in Oregon City. But where our, where we come in is, yeah, the, the conference is all week, and then this this uh, Friday tw the twenty sixth in the in the evening is the big finale event. That's where we are going to be. Wouldn't it be a Wouldn't it be a good idea to tie in the the parks open house event with that somehow? I, I can see two different events uh, and a pretty uh, strung out Oregon City staff trying to support <laughs> both of those. I don't uh, see it, that seems like a bit much to do all in one day to me to do the park visit thing. It's too just um, I don't know. Well, you, but you could potentially I advertise for that big event through if we did the park visit day open house, parks open house earlier in the month uh, we potentially advertise for that <clears throat> big event because that just seems like a big event that's going to take a lot of Oregon City staff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you'd, you'd, I mean, if you would be in favor of having two separate two separate times. That would, that's just my opinion. I get. I, I kind of have to agree that it would be separate because because of that six to ten at night I don't think that's the you know I, I, in my mind I guess I was thinking about a Saturday <coughs> afternoon for the the parks event thing that seems to be the the right time to try to attract people outside to parks um, you know whichever one comes come first you could promote you promote the other one at, at that and time together that way but um, I don't I just envision it, the other as being a Saturday, you know, 10 to 2 or some, some kind of a thing. I just think, would it be too much to do something like every weekend in the month of July and have that be the culminating evening event? So you do something mm -hmm. each Saturday and then have Friday night be the big party. Like do one park? Yeah. When does... When do we have concerts in the park? Is that August or does that start? Uh, it starts in July, actually, and goes July and August. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah. It's not huge. But the uh, <coughs> concerts in the park, we've got a big audience that we can do, you know, announcements to sure. for these types of things as well. The, the, the park's open house, you know, we can certainly announce those at, at the concerts in the park if it hasn't already occurred by then so just things like that I like that <laughs> I gotta think about that but I, yeah parks park yeah. Saturdays mm -hmm. in July in honor of national what is it called uh, park, national, parks and rec month yeah yeah <coughs> and and okay admittedly you're you're, you're having to support <coughs> three or four different days but you can move on you know all your resources are in one spot instead of strung out at three spots. So in a way, it might even be easier. Hmm. Couldn't think about. Good idea. <laughs> have a lot of activities going on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Anything else on that? Yeah, I was thinking. Yes. Uh, somebody brought up the idea of using these uh, mini buses. We have the Oregon City. What do you call the old Oregon City trolley? Trolleys. trolleys. I'm not sure if that if they could fit into it some way to move people around, but it's kind of a novelty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Does the city operate that trolley? Oh. <clears throat> yeah, there's been some discussion about that recently. In fact, whether whether that's going to be able to continue to be funded or not by the city. So I'm not. That mm. might that potentially might be in flux. <laughs> but no no firm decisions have been made. Just a. You know, anyway. Well, my my input is that. We need to think clearly about what it is we're trying to accomplish and not try to uh, overcommit and underdeliver on this open uh, parks open house. I think we need to get some pretty 
clear thinking in terms of what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to do. What is it we're trying to do? What are the, what are the goals? I mean, is it just everybody show up and then, then what? Somebody give a speech or <laughs> what happens then? I think it's to have an engaging activity that would draw people to the parks to maybe see the parks that they don't normally go to. Thanks. So if you picked a couple parks every week and you had some kind of event or someone hosted the park for that, that event, then you could advertise it through the service clubs, the farmer's market, the other events that are going on, and have a draw for, for families to bring their kids to or to have a frisbee golf tournament or to have a two-on-two -two or whatever. We don't have to do all of them, but just pick a couple right. that mm -hmm. would get people in that park that might say, oh, I never even knew this was here. So I think that's kind of what we're wanting I think we're that was the idea do. behind it. Yeah. I think so. You, we're kind of brainstorming, which is good. Um, I've been surprised at so many Julys here in Oregon, and the weather is like, ugh. So I'm thinking <laughs> August. You know, it's not, it's not a perfect fit for what we're talking about. But August is a lot better than July, typically, for weather. If you want a bigger crowd, I mean, there's so many Saturdays in July, I can't count them, it was like raining. Like, why is it raining in July? Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't rain as much in August, September, August, September. So, just to think about it, I mean, we're trying to fit it around the, the National Parks Day, but, um, you know, I think we should also think about potentially having it in a, in a in a month that typically has less rainfall too. I don't know. Well, and you could reverse an idea. it and and make July twenty sixth the kickoff. Right. And then do it after that if you really wanted the weather. Right. Yeah. 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 But and then my other thought, you guys, is by the by the next meeting, and I'm you know I'm aligning myself uh, with Bob and all of us because we're thinking about it, is we need to really start putting meat on the bones for this and, and maybe start making contacts with some of the great people of, of the Kiwanis Club, et cetera, and, and let them know some of our ideas that are starting to, you know, be more than just jello. And, uh, you know, seeing if there's any interest out there. And they might say, yeah, great. And, uh, but yeah, so February, March, we should be really starting to put meat on the bones for this thing. So. I would just suggest that we go back maybe and, and if we find, uh, you know, a couple of minutes on our own, continue to kind of brainstorm and maybe we shoot a few meal, emails out to one another and say, hey, you know, let's, what about this or, you know, who could do this, who, who has the contacts for the, for the different clubs, et cetera. And then uh, maybe we could assign some responsibilities by the, the next time we meet. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? All right, we'll move on to PRAC vacancies. Just as kind of a uh, you know, reminder, uh, we're, we're needing to fill some positions. We've got, um, so we've got the three vacancies uh, that were created from the terms ending last, last year. Um, let's see, we've got, uh, to date, I've received two applications um, for three openings. Uh, one of those applications I received actually in last year, in the, in the, towards the end of the calendar year, um, I attempted to call that person and, and didn't didn't get any call back. So I'm, I don't know if I, I'm going to do some follow up there, but anyway, hopefully that person's still interested. And then just a couple of days ago, we got a brand new application. So um, we'll see what happens here. Um, the idea would be, you know, try to consolidate if we get multiple applications to get everybody to come in kind of on one one date makes it a little bit easier to kind of sort out what's going on and then um, as I think think you know the process has been that that Mayor Neely wants to be involved in those interviews uh, which is good because he gets to know who's who he's appointing um, so tentatively I would uh, be looking at setting up some interviews like we've done previously where we go prior to the to the meeting at, at your February meeting, you know, an hour before, or however, depending on how many applications we've got and how many folks we would need to do, but you know, 15 to 20 minutes a person or whatever it is, 
Uh, so tentatively, um, you know, we might have a couple of people to interview in February. Uh, we're still, we continue to advertise these openings. Um, having three openings at once is a pretty, pretty big turnover of positions. Usually we're dealing with maybe one or maybe two at a time at the most. So again, uh, you know, word of mouth is a great way to seek applications. If you all know of anybody in the community that would be interested, please, by all means, uh, encourage them to apply. Just direct them to me or to the website to, to do that. So that's just an update what's going on. Uh, like I said, tentatively at the next meeting, we might <coughs> schedule an hour beforehand to do the interviews like we've done before. Okay. A any uh, mm. any uh, progress on a Pioneer Center representative? No, we haven't had good luck on that yet. Kathy's been, Kathy Wiseman, our center director has been uh, trying to seek out somebody that would be good. Lynn did such a great job <laughs> uh, and both in terms of representing the Pioneer Center but was just an all-around great member and, and, and mm -hmm. on the committee. So, But uh, Kathy's been trying to find somebody that, that can uh, possibly fit that uh, position and so far hasn't had any any luck with anybody that's been interested that she thought would be able to do that. So we'll keep okay. looking. Okay. All right, uh, next item, joint meeting with Natural Resources Committee. Um, so <clears throat> this came up uh, uh, recently uh, with our planning department. So whether you're aware or not, the city has a Natural Resources Committee, um, and in their bylaws, uh, they have a, um, a an objective in there. It's a, one of the items in their bylaws that they will meet with the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee once a year to have a joint meeting mm -hmm. to just basically generally coordinate with what's going on because there's a lot of crossover. Uh, for example, they, the um, Natural Resources Committee was, uh, was involved quite a bit with this uh, uh, heritage tree designation that went on with Waterboard Park mm -hmm. that we talked about last year and um, you know things, things of that nature. So. Um, they have requested that, that, that I check with you on seeing if we could schedule one of your meetings uh, coming up sometime in the relatively near future to be a joint meeting with the Natural Resources Committee where you would basically just kind of discuss common issues and, and things of that nature. So wanted to put that in front of you and see if you wanted to select a, a specific <coughs> meeting of yours to invite them to be you know part of. Uh, for this purpose, uh, if you want to think about it and talk about it again next month, whatever whatever you prefer to do. But just basically, they've said, can we can we get on a prac date as a joint meeting? So you know, I was thinking about you know, next month might be a little tricky because mm -hmm. we're still trying to we're kind of in flux here and trying to figure out you know the the position of chair even and and filling some positions <coughs> here and so forth. So I don't know if you want to. But March, March, wait a bit yeah. longer. So <coughs> they would we do it on their regular night, our regular night. Or is that? Uh, I was suggesting night, whatever. Yeah, uh, I I've suggested that that we do it on one of the PRAC meeting mm -hmm. nights. Uh, it's not in your bylaws to meet with them. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know when this happened or how exactly. But it's it's fine. It's it's a good thing. Um, but it, it, it's in their bylaws that they're supposed to meet with PRAC, but it's not in your bylaws to meet with them. So uh -huh. um, maybe we clean that up in our bylaws at some point, too. But mm -hmm. uh, at any rate, I, I was suggesting that, that, that they would meet on your meeting night. But, you know, open to that. Uh, and, okay. and then I guess we could determine, <coughs> you know, because if, if we do that, depending on how long that meeting is going to take, is it is it all is it is that your entire meeting or do we say you know uh, from seven to eight will be the joint meeting with the natural resources because you'll still have you know for example we're talking about we've we've been putting some of these things on kind of a rolling um, agenda that we want to keep discussions going so we don't we don't want to lose an entire meeting um, to you know not be able to keep some of the momentum going on on discussions so. I think we need to kind of figure that out a little bit. This is really, it's really up to you. I'm presenting this to you and would, you know, like to know what you would like to do so that I can just provide that feedback. But 
you know, I was thinking along the lines of it's at one of your regularly scheduled meetings. You extend that, you know, invitation out, but maybe you put a, you know, a time limit on it so that you mm -hmm. can still conduct your business that night or whatever, whatever you want to do. So. Can I ask a question? What would be on the agenda with them? Do we have issues? I mean, is there seven things we need to talk about? Three things we need to talk about? <laughs> well, Just chatting in general? Yeah. I'm not a coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, that's a really mm -hmm. good question, and uh, you know, we would have to develop. I would. I would work with uh, um, the planning department staffs, just like I work with with you as a committee. The planning department staff works with that with that committee. Um, we we would need to develop an agenda coming mm -hmm. into that meeting because I, I I think it could just become. You know, well, an endless discussion of some type, <laughs> and it needs to be, you know, what is the focus? Again, they've asked to meet with you, essentially, and 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 so once we've selected a date, I, I would then try to, you know, hone in on, okay, you've, you've asked to meet, but one of the things we want to do is develop a productive discussion, so. Mm -hmm. You know, this reminds me, I, uh, on that South End concept plan uh, with Pete Walter, mm -hmm. Uh, we were talking one time about the uh, the input from our committee into that concept plan. Now, maybe is, maybe that is this where that came from? Did was it Pete that talked to you about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pete is Pete is the person that that is the, the staff plan. liaison to the Natural Resources Committee. Yeah, and he's he's the honcho on the South End. He's also working on the South End plan. That just popped into my I don't know if, that, <coughs> if there's a direct connection to what, okay. that or not, if it just happened. I don't know. It would be very interesting, I think, for, for our committee to hear at least that part of the on the agenda because there's a whole section devoted to parks and recreation and natural resources in that South End concept plan. You might learn, you know, what they're doing in terms of future parks and, and uh, sites. Can I... Oh, of course. Sorry. Um, oh. I think it would be nice if they came and made a presentation and told us what they were about and what how we might be able to work together and then from there I feel like it should be a almost a separate work session at some point rather than part of our regular meeting that's just I guess I want to know what they want to kind of work on together I mean I'm a, I think it would be great but I don't want to waste anybody's time either that's just my mm -hmm. thought I, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I didn't want to lead you in a direction that you know. I mean, I I'm just presenting the request that as it came It'd to me. It'd be good to know what but they're about. I, yeah, I, I have I, I have the know. same questions. I, I but I'm I'm positive. Like what Lisa had to say. Yeah, I'll go that. Would you like me to phrase it that way to them? I mean, in you know, in a positive way. Uh, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mean you know, but. That, that that would be the starting point is mm -hmm. to, to make a yeah you know, maybe block we would say we'll give a half an hour for this discussion at, a, at at the March meeting or whatever it might be that they would actually make a presentation of what types of things they're um, working on at the at, you know what what their objectives are for the year and and then look at another date down the road to actually do more of a of a work session where an agenda is prepared because you really don't know what the agenda is. Mm -hmm. And I can't answer that question for you right now. Uh, yeah, I like that. Kind of lay that out. Uh, the, the, again, the, the, the interesting thing component of this is that it's in their bylaws that they're supposed to meet with PRAC. And they've never done that. You've never done that. Uh, but they, this committee actually went dormant for a while. It, uh, the Natural Resources Committee was in place, it has been in place for a while, um, and it was pretty active. And then... Uh, Basically, they sort of stopped having enough people involved. There weren't enough, I don't know, the committee just sort of died off, I guess. There weren't enough people on the committee, and somewhere along the way, the city just kind of said, let's just let that one just kind of be dormant for a while. And then it, it was a goal last year or the year before in the commission's um, objectives to, to restart the Natural Resources Committee. So that's been going on. I guess it's been a couple of years they've been back meeting and so they're starting to you know get um get you know kind of grow again and and get you know a 
objectives of their own and whatever they're doing. So I think it'd be probably helpful to hear what they would like to specifically talk about. So. Yeah. What what they're involved in and how they see that tying into what we do. There is some crossover, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. And where where they think it is. Uh, they're talking about so, the, uh, they're talking about it in the South End concept plan. I'll pass out some information here shortly to show you where they are on there's a whole section devoted to that. I'm just wondering about the, the wording in their bylaws. Do they, uh, you know, I kind of find it hard to believe that it would be a, a committee meeting like this that would be the requirement. And it would probably, it probably says that we, they need to meet with us, which, uh, you know, a presentation would be, would uh, suffice. If we, if we knew those points of intersection uh, that they have with us, then we we could we could perform that function. Um, in other words, we we would know what business that we're currently undertaking and and uh, involved with intersects what they do, and then we could we could open up lines of communication with that committee and keep that going, uh, rather than having an ongoing or an annual or or whatever. Committee where, or committee meeting where we're all together, a combined meeting. I think if we meet with them, you know, I I don't know if there's any hierarchy of you know that we could say yes, we'd like you to come and present to us, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but it just makes sense to me that when we when we gain a greater understanding of what they're all about, we we could perform that function based on our knowledge of their. You know, and then develop lines of communication or cross communication, so that so that we would know if they could help or they could help us, or if we were doing uh, work uh, doubling, you know, doubling our efforts, so to speak, or wasting uh, our time because we're working on the same thing and that type of thing. I think that I think you just hit on it, Brian. I think you probably just kind of honed in. That, that was really really well said. That I think that's the the, the key point right there is to make sure that. Two separate city committees aren't working on similar things, but in different directions or without knowledge or whatever. So, I think there are a, a number of things that that will cross over as far as what what you are talking about and what your objectives are and what they're doing and what they're talking about. And just I think I think it's just to make sure that that's not occurring or it, that it is yeah. occurring that you're communicating. So. Um, if, if what I'm hearing correctly is, uh, I'll summarize back to you what I think I'm hearing is that um, you would invite them to come to your March meeting and it wouldn't so much be like an entire joint work session uh, meeting uh, because we don't know what the agenda would be, but that we would ask, that, that you would ask that they just present just kind of generally what, what they're doing and what their committee is, uh, you know, about and what potentially what they see as some future items that could be on an, an, another agenda down the road to, to work towards some common goals and things like that. Is that is that a fair summary or assessment of what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Just as a starting point at least? And yeah. So we'll do that in March, okay. assuming that that works for them. And okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else under general business? I have a question. I don't know if, uh, for Scott. I don't know how much you know, but I've been hearing reading about uh, the uh, train station down there becoming more of a bike center. And uh, did you have any in information about that? Because I think it relates a little bit to some of that trail stuff that we've been talking mm -hmm. about. Great question. Um, sorry, do a little. I'm I'm typing in, thinking, and listening. Secretary. Uh, <laughs> as soon as my brain and my fingers catch up with you here. Uh, yeah, that's that's a um, part of our economic development strategy that the city is working on. Um, I, I, we have an economic development manager um, who is has worked. It, it, that's kind of a little, I don't know if this is the right term, but a, a little business incubator kind of a, an idea. Um, the, the train depot is what we're talking about. Um, and um, specifically, there's been uh, 
what's kind of worked out of that process has been that idea about becoming kind of a bike friendly business area that might be businesses might be set up in there that could serve the train um, riders passengers or you know um, ancillary folks that come and go from there as well as uh, the kind of the biking thing um, if you're um, yeah and there might be some there might be some tie-ins to to this to this committee and, and what's going on here um, Eric Underwood is our economic development manager he's the one that really has the that knows the details and, and the ins and outs I could I could maybe ask him just to kind of write a, a little general summary or something that I could send or send on to you as a committee and just let you know and then if it's something you want to talk about more maybe that would help answer your question a little bit better because sure. yeah. I don't have all of the, the, the details but uh, yeah there could potentially sounds be sounds exciting it is it's, inter it. it's really interesting what's going on there yeah and there's some definite there's some movement um, talking about doing some tenant improvements and starting to get it ready for potential renters or people that want to be in that building so I'll try to get you some additional information about that Thank just you. to let you know okay Anything else in general business? Yes. No, I just yeah, just Don, to let you know. Have we gotten anywhere or had any conversations about properties for looking at the dog park? Just Not that I okay. know of, unless anything has happened with that one piece where there was some private ownership possibly <clears throat> interested. Oh, they seemed to they, they kind of they were, and then I can't really get any response anymore. So. Um, well, I know we talked about you know potentially uh, incorporating into the um, the Glen Oak site, and we're still as we're going to be working on a master plan. That's still a possibility. Um, I can tell you that the uh, the city commission uh, <coughs> two weeks ago had their annual goal setting retreat that they do every year, and uh, which I I attend and, and participate as well. Um, uh, one of the commissioners brought up that to potentially put that on as a, as a commission goal to to develop a dog park. So it's it's on the radar screen. I don't think it made the final cut as an actual commission directive goal. That doesn't mean that they aren't you know supportive of the idea of, of exploring that. But uh, uh, you know they they have to kind of pare down their list of things that are are achievable. And they, I think it it was discussed, but didn't quite make the yes this is a definite commission goal but there's some interest one of the things that came up though um, <clears throat> so there it, and that was that was completely brought up just by the city commission without any prompting or anything like that so I think maybe some of what you've been doing and I talked about the work that you know Prax has been doing on this for the last couple of years and the commission was aware of of our our student volunteer that had worked on some of that and some of the different things that occurred um, one of the things that came up was actually Mayor Neely even I think kind of led this part of the discussion was if we can't build a, a standalone dog park or at least not in the in the you know real near future it might be out there a little further um, uh, re-exploring the idea of doing an off-leash designated off-leash site that in, in a park that already exists so in other words if we can't if we don't have the resources to do what we need to do to build a, a you know a, a f and a dog park with all the amenities can we just pick a park or two and designate you know that this is an off-leash zone or whatever we talked about that before here with 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 <coughs> crack and with our subcommittee that was kind of working on it and talked about doing that within existing parks and we kind of went through the good and the bad about that and and I think somewhere along the way the recommendation came out that maybe we don't want to do that but maybe we do want to think about that um, in fact uh, Mayor Neely specifically cited the site which happens to be right across the street from his house which is um, Barkley Park not Barkley Hills Park up the hill by the cemetery but Barkley Park just downhill from the Barkley school and uh, in that area that kind of is an undeveloped it is an undeveloped more of just kind of a natural area as as Doug put it it's already a dog park anyway <laughs> so why don't we just can't we just pass some you know city you know ordinance or resolution and just say this is so designated let it be <laughs> what's that so let it be written <laughs> 
So I said, well, of course, my response is, you're, you're the city yeah. commission. You can, <laughs> you can enact whatever rules you want to enact. So sure we did you get good insurance. Well, we did talk about, you know, that that, that had been discussed, and that, I don't know if that's specific. Well, actually, we did talk about that site. We've talked about that site. Mm -hmm. uh, but whether that's something that, that we want to kind of think about again and, you know, revisit that off-leash, designated off-leash zone or de designated off-leash park, but without doing any specific amenities, just, you know, passing a park rule that says this one is is off-leash or... or you know, whatever. So we could, yeah, we could do that, Scott. I mean, that would be a, that would be an easy, easier type of solution. There'd still be lots of things we need to think about. But I also think if you <clears throat> if you attach the idea of a dog park to something that already has inertia, like Glen Oak Master Plan, that it makes a lot of sense. So, so if you're talking about two things and they naturally fit together, and we agree. And we can make that recommendation. I think it it just it just makes sense that 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 you attach it to something that already has inertia, that's already going. We know it's going to be master planned. So if you if you insert a dog park, which has come up in the commission, they you know they they have discussions about Glen Oak, also. So we we marry those two up, and uh, and if it makes sense, if it makes you know. Within the within the construct of that master plan, then to me, it's 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 just a whole the economy of all of that, the time spent. If you have two different things versus the same thing, essentially, I think it just makes sense as far you know all the way around. I, I like the idea of of uh, trying it in an existing park, whether it be Barkley Park or whatever. Um, but just to, to tie in with what Brian just said, and Scott and I had this conversation at one point, I, we don't, the perfect piece of land doesn't exist. We're going to end up trying to shoehorn something into an existing park that might be too small or might have drainage issues or might have parking issues or might have neighborhood issues or whatever. But to start with a clean slate on a big piece of property and actually master plan a dog park as as part of it instead of trying to come in after the after the fact and a park that already has its own master plan and now try to shoehorn that in just seems like a really poor second choice and so I in all honesty I kind of backed off on um, pushing a dog park in another site other than Glen Oak and master plan it from day one and, and do it right because that's what nine acres Yes. So there's room. There's room to do a nice dog park, nice parking area to serve the park and the dog park part of it, and still have all the other amenities that that the neighborhood's going to expect. Yes. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about Britt Tucker's construction class. Yeah, ab absolutely. And the college. I mean, it's adjacent to the college too. And I don't know what kind of whether they have architecture or. I know they have a, a big, um, oh, the word just, dis is horticulture the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they have a horticulture program. Yeah, landscaping and, and horticulture, you know, a big part of that. A big program in that area, anyway, that I think we could use, too, because it's adjacent the other way. Yeah, I, I agree The the, you know, getting the economy from doing kind of something within an existing plan where you're starting from scratch and... If you go out and pick a site to build just a dog park, you've got to put in parking. You've got to put in probably some <coughs> other amenities. Um, if you're going to do something and it's part of that, you're you're getting a economy of scale from putting those things in for the other purposes as well. I guess the question is, if you know, funding dependent on at what point in time we're going to build that park and whether on and you know the the master plan process will be what determines that the community will accept that idea or not and that'll be kind of flushed out um, but uh, if it does then and if it sticks and becomes part of that plan then um, you start looking at the timing of when is that going to be built and you know it's funding dependent and, and some things it could still be a little ways out it could still be two to three to four years out maybe or whatever I don't I don't want to put a number on it but it could be a little while out there there must be some good plans somewhere I'm, I'm sure there are uh, <clears throat> about you know the proper mix of activities with the dog park 
I wouldn't think you'd want a bunch of little kids' activities around dogs that aren't on leashes. At least I wouldn't think that'd be a good idea. Well, Bob, uh, we're, I think we're talking if, if we're if you're talking a, a a planned dog park that's a mm -hmm. part of a bigger park, it would be a fenced area. It's done. I mean, it, I mean, you can go to West Lynn at Mary mm -hmm. S. Young Park. Mm -hmm. They have a very successful mm -hmm. dog park, and there's no fences at all, and people just mm -hmm. know that's where it is, and it's right across a really small parking lot from soccer fields, mm -hmm. um, and and they do make it work. But I think what we're talking about, as at, at Glen Oak anyway, would be a fenced, dedicated area. Yeah. Probably the best example of that close by is at Lusher Farms up in yes. in Lake right. Oswego, that's where it's. Great. Part of a it's it's a fenced dog area within a park that serves a lot of different uses. It has a whole bunch yeah, of things. That makes sense, right? So the you know I guess the question I was getting at is in in the meantime are are we willing to wait whatever that amount of time is or do we look at something where that's moving down down that track and it and it's already I think we've already planted that seed pretty well and it's it's a good idea that we can definitely explore. Well, should then should should we consider the idea of of going back to the commission and sending somebody there to say, practice discuss this issue, and we would like to suggest uh, <coughs> experimental or whatever you want to call it, uh, off leash regulation for a particular park. That's, I think that's the question: is if you want to consider that. Then try to at least acknowledge and maybe accommodate you know and, and it's it's not it's not the full dog park but it's you know accommodating that need and, and at least acknowledging it I mm -hmm. mean it it happens anyway but most of our parks there's a lot of off, off leash yeah. that goes on and you know we we wish that we could better control that we just don't have we don't have the personnel to enforce it we just try to put up signs and educate people and, and that kind yeah. of thing. if we call it a, that I'm not suggesting we do, but an off-leash area versus a dog park. <coughs> right. I would definitely not want to call it a dog park. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. It would be it designated would be an as an off-leash off area. Off-leash area. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. Yes. To, to answer your question, <laughs> we do want to consider that. At least I think so. <laughs> do we want? To, are, are we ready to, that we want to propose that to the? Yeah, commission? I think so. Sure. I think they're ready to say yes too. We've been talking about it. I know. So, um, and you know, what little I know about our attorney, it, it's not going to happen unless it passes his test. And so mm -hmm. we don't, we don't. I don't think we have anything. And you know, Don and uh, Bob, this, I'm addressing your concerns and ours too. You know, this is a good idea, and but we have somebody who is going to exercise some rigor in understanding what this means. He's got the mayor, he's got this committee, he's got thoughtful people making thoughtful comments about a good thing. And you know we're not we're not the only ones that are, are going to be adding our piece to this, you know. Somebody's gonna go, well what are the legal ramifications of X, Y, and Z happens. So, you know, there are people on staff that can that can help us understand the liabilities that would be incurred if any i'm sure there are some but yeah that w i don't think it should prevent us from going forward hmm. and just our saying this is a good year right. yes sir right yeah. correct right. that's actually a really good part to do it at as well because the playground is all fenced over there yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's not combined with that free area exactly. it's yeah. it's blocked off yeah, yeah. I thought we had it at Chapin Park already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think everybody that lives next to a park thinks it's already at their park. Depending on which <laughs> park you're at, you could say almost all of them are off-leash yeah. areas, but we'd like to encourage maybe areas. encouraging people that want to do that specifically go to an off-leash, mm -hmm. designated off-leash area, and one that's not used a whole lot for other purposes, which this park that we're talking about, is that's kind of true for that. Uh, would be would be a really good one to do that but so I'm, I, we're not creating a new park we're not creating I, a new you know we don't we're not putting up a new facility we're just saying we're changing the rule of this park right that you don't have to abide by the leash law and the people that come and visit that park know that right so if you're a user that isn't there for dog reasons 
you understand that that's also going to happen. And you're going to have that potential other activity going on. So you know, it kind of works. Mm -hmm. Portland okay. has done that. They've had some good and bad, you know, uh, results. But uh, some of it depends on, I think, on where you specifically put that and whether it creates conflicts with other uses. And Portland didn't. Don't they try to? Isn't it? Certain days hours, and hours. Hours, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, and that, that's 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 really, that becomes it, yeah. a management yeah, it's, it's, nightmare. Okay, so sounds like we have consensus from the group that mm -hmm. we want to, whether in person or or via Scott's comments or whatever, um, approach the city council in a public way and say that we're supportive of the idea of of Barkley Park as a off leash area. And then Scott, maybe you and I can talk about what the right way is yeah. to how to approach the commission sure. with that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Good deal. Woo. Woo hoo. Yeah. Or woof woof. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, Track yeah. Member reports. Well, I would. I, <laughs> Barkley. I know it's Barkley, too. It's Park, cool. Okay. It okay. is. Yeah. Too bad it's, it's a C, not a K, and then <laughs> yeah. Barkley. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, well, maybe we could change. change the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the historians would Yeah, appreciate. right. The Barclays would probably be, you know, not I appreciate in favor that. That's a significant that. historical. Right. Okay. I, I was just going to mention two things yes. real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just let's maybe talk about the RV uh, Park Master Plan, and, the, and if, if we can't get like a two-minute update on that tonight, if, if there is one. And then just one question, for because I'm sure I ask this every time, but we have nine positions on this on this committee. We currently are only have six filled. What is a what is a quorum? We did good tonight, but I mean, what's a what's a quorum if only six of nine are filled? Is it still I would think five five, five of nine, or is it four of six? That's a that's a bylaw. Oh, have you got the bylaws? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, Sorry there. about that. Quorum shall exist when half plus one of the appointed membership is present. Okay. Appointed. So, so, four, so four, right four, now you only need four. Four. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's it that's that's reflects okay. that the commission or that the committee might grow and, and shrink and that it, it works with that. So, okay. Right. Yeah. Good question. Okay. And then maybe if we don't have time tonight, Scott, or if you don't have a good a good update or really not a not an update at all. I'd like to have an update on uh, at some point. I know I know I missed the last meeting. Apologize on how we're coming along with the master planning process or the planning for the master plan <laughs> process for the RP Park. <laughs> I can give you I can give you a really quick update okay. on that when we get. I'll do that in okay. my report. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, all right. Let's move on to PRAC member reports. Bob, you want to start? I know you want to talk to us about the South End. I'm going to give you some reading material. I don't know how many you want to keep. I, I ran off 10, so there'll be more than we need tonight, but uh, I'll pick up the extras at the end. Uh, I've been to three South End Concept planning meetings so far. There was one last night that I missed. I've been uh, wrestling with a cold, and, and uh, I'm doing fine today, but yesterday I was questionable, so I didn't go. <laughs> And there's a lot of information in here, and I, I wanted to point out uh, uh, results of uh, what they call phase one. And that was a period of time between October and the middle of January where they got input from a lot of people, and they went to uh, civic committees, civic organizations, and uh, citizens from the South End area and just got some input, and you can see how they're listed there. Uh, I won't go over, I'll mention two or three. They want to preserve the rural character, have active, livable, good neighborhoods, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to flip to the second page and what they call phase two. And phase two started with a December 13th open house out at the McLaughlin School where over 100 people showed up to get wow. input once again. They were mostly residents from that, that particular area. And uh, they got input that pretty much mirrored the original phase one input, just a little, little further refined. They said the same kinds of things, maintain the rural character, 
uh, the uh, quality of life. <clears throat> they want to make sure they maintain large lots, li limited high density housing, and so forth. There's a lot of things listed. I just highlighted two or three of the top ones. They've defined some values, and they are listed three or four pages back. Uh, what they call the values to guide the concept plan, and the major categories would be rural character, livable community, environmental stewardship, transportation options, and excellent schools. So everything they're trying to design would, would fit the core values that they have come up with so far, and uh, but they're still in motion. They're being refined constantly. I missed a meeting last night. This was on the agenda for further refinement. I did want to point out based on our conversation just a few minutes ago about the crossover or impact on page four there's a whole section on parks and natural systems and a lot of they're getting a lot of feedback on uh, parks where they should be located <clears throat> and how they should be uh, developed and so forth so uh, at least in their their minds there is crossover between the work they're doing at least part of it and the work that we're responsible for and that kind of popped out as we were talking a few minutes ago that in their mind there's they're getting input on that and we should be aware of it uh, what else did I want to say here the next open house and they're trying to get a lot of people that they can get to these meetings be February 27th once again back at the McLaughlin school and uh, I expect a, a lot of people to show up because there are a lot of people following this uh, especially those that live out there. <clears throat> the last thing I want to point out, and invite you to read this at your leisure later, but there's a map on the back that shows the area, the South End Concept Plan Study Area. And the area is that uh, solid gray area that's involved in the study. This also shows the city limits. That's the uh, blocked uh, lines, shows the city limits. The checkered area is the 2002 urban growth boundary expansion to Oregon City. And then, of course, the, uh, the gray area solid is the study area. So it goes on our south end road class at uh, McLaughlin School. So with that, I uh, conclude my comments. And just to say it's very interesting so far. And uh, they've got a big job on their hands to, to surround all of this. Scott, I'm struggling a little bit with the map, but do do we have any, is there any park land that we already own in that study uh, area? Let me double check here. I don't, uh, Filbert runs right on the edge of that. It's hard. It's, I don't it? think it's in it, but I think, it's, well, maybe. Yeah, uh, I think it's just on the outside of it. This doesn't give enough. Okay. There was a, just curious. A lot of discussion about the trails and how they connect. <clears throat> that was also uh, at the December 13th meeting. A lot of discussion about that. And of course, we talk about that. The trails and how they connect and so forth. <clears throat> Run Park, just to clarify, it's just it's just outside of the boundaries of that, but it's real close. Okay. And Brian just pointed out that there's a big, it's that there's that big chunk of metro property right there between 9090 and the edge of this is all mm -hmm. metro, most metro. Uh, what did yep. you say the next open house date was? So February yeah, 27th. Probably tell. February 27th. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Good information. Thank you, Bob. Great information. Anything else? That's it for me. Thank you. Okay, Brian. Uh, I have nothing. Um, I don't. Have, I don't have a comment. I, I guess I have a question that for for Scott and more a point of curiosity. Um, the property between Clackamat and McDonald's, which I guess I always assumed was city owned, but I see a for sale sign on it. It is city owned. The city is actually the the one that's putting that for sale sign up there. Oh. Uh, it's not a park property, however. It's just a kind of a general city-owned property. And um, the, the commission 
uh, the city commission also working with the urban renewal uh, urban renewal commission have had a, a um, an objective to identify vacant city properties that are not otherwise being you know used that might be able to be put back into private ownership and be redeveloped for economic purposes and that was one of those properties that came up and has been sounds good yeah so the the <coughs> fortunate part of that is that we use that as an overflow parking lot for mm -hmm. um, Clackamas Park activities as yeah. well as during the, the high seasons for the fishing runs when there's a lot of boats and trailers down there um, that gets used. So those those if it if that property does turn over and sell or, or redevelop, it's those there's going to be some parking displaced. We'll have to deal with. It's a commercial zone, right? Zoning commercial. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the exact, but it's it's in a commercial category of some yeah. type. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please. In uh, March, I think it's the second weekend in March. Um, you know, I don't know if this has ever been done in Oregon City. There's there's one guy that I would ask, but he's not here tonight. But uh, at the pool, we are going to have a dual sanction meet. USA Swimming, which is, you know, little kids all the way up to Olympians. USA Swimming is going to have a dual sanction meet with United States Masters Swimming the second weekend of March. And it's a dual sanction. It's a big. It's a big deal. It's uh, Tim Watt is going to be the meet director, and um, it's just a good event. It's a good event to have at our pool, and and we're gonna we're gonna draw a lot of uh, master swimmers from around the state and probably outside of the state. Uh, they like a short course meters pool, which is the what we got there, and also for the age group kids. What's the so date? It should, it should be nice. I think it's March 8, 9, 10, which is the second weekend in March. But I will, uh, I'll, I just thought of it now as a part of, part of my report, so I apologize that, that that may be wrong, but I don't think it is. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. No. Okay. Staff reports. Okay. Uh, a few items to tell you about here. Uh, So the uh, update on the Rivercrest restroom project, uh, just to keep you posted on what, what's going on with that, um, we uh, did a bidding uh, process. Actually, we did it as a request for proposals because we did it as what's called a design build process. Um, and we based uh, it, what we have uh, done with this project is tried to base the design of it uh, to have a similar type of construction architecture that the um, restroom at Wesley Lynn Park that we just completed last year would, would have a kind of a similar look because we just we really like that. We really like that look a lot and functionality and, and all that kind of stuff. So we completed that uh, selection process for a contractor. We have a contractor on board um, and they're going to be kind of getting, getting going. Some of this work will behind this, be behind the scenes that you won't see actually at the park right away. but. Uh, we are on track for redeveloping that restroom, basically taking the existing one completely to the ground and, and then rebuilding one with a much higher capacity, much more functional, and obviously newer and, and more usable. So we're on track for having that done this summer. might interfere just a little bit with our um, spray park season there, depending on how our weather does or doesn't cooperate in the spring. So things are moving along on that project. Um, and then uh, the second one there, the OPRD board meeting. This is um, that's the Oregon Parks and Rec Department. So the state, the state Parks and Recreation Department. Um, there they have a a citizen board, which is uh, a lot like what you uh, the function that you are to the city. They have a citizen board uh, that that serves the state. Uh, they meet at different places all over the state of Oregon. They hold their their board meetings move around, and I don't know what their frequency is, whether it's once a month or qu I can't remember if it's quarterly or monthly or whatever, but um, it just so happens that they're meeting uh, in Oregon City next week, next Wednesday, um, Wednesday the 30th at uh, the Abernathy Center. And uh, mm -hmm. this is just information to let you know. So the State Parks and Rec Board will be here. Um, they have some interest in some things going on, and we, we've been the recipient of a number of state parks grants, uh, but also there's discussions going on with the Blue Heron 
mill site mm-hmm. in terms of redevelopment and and uh, we're trying to engage the state specifically through the parks agency as a as a partner in that project um, so there's some stuff going on the day before their meeting with a tour of the site for the state representatives and and that kind of thing but uh, the the board meeting at the Abernathy Center on Wednesday is <coughs> just kind of their business meeting and um, that's open to the public and they've advertised it and, and so forth I'll be I'll be attending that to just be a representative of Oregon City and kind of welcome them here and thank them for having their meeting in Oregon City and thank them for their grants and the <laughs> other monies that they funneled our way <coughs> um, so that's just information for you uh, let's see Ermertinger House, uh, some of this, a couple more things that aren't on your list there, but just some quick updates. The Ermertinger House update, uh, the architect and engineering um, design plan, uh, we are just about done with that. We're wrapping that up. Uh, probably by the end of January or the beginning of February, we'll have a complete set of construction ready documents. Uh, and then we begin the process of determining what the uh, construction uh, schedule is going to be. Uh, we're going to probably look at, at doing some of that later this calendar year, but uh, that that's where we're at on that. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, our annual daddy-daughter dinner dance event, which is one of our more popular and definitely more cute <laughs> events that we do all year, uh, is coming up soon. Uh, that's on Friday, February 8th this year. It's at the Abernathy Center. It's a wonderful event. Um, and uh, we are almost sold out. We, we sell that out every year, and it, um, our demand <coughs> exceeds our capacity for sure, but uh, we're kind of limited. It's a good. I went there probably five years, and daughter's too old now, but love, <laughs> loved it. So. It's wonderful. Uh, let's see, then um, uh, a couple other things here. Um, at the last meeting, uh, I think it was Mike that asked, uh, but for some Parks SDC information, and I provided that for you uh, in the materials at your place. Uh, basically, what I've done is put um, the budget. Uh, it's just basically copied directly out of the um, adopted 2012-13, which is our current fiscal year budget. And um, and then on the back of uh, at the end of that is a a really good uh, just kind of an exp- explanation piece of what. Um, SDCs are and how they work within state law and how they're how they're to be utilized. Um, uh, just as a, a really quick kind of a refresher, that's that's for you. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions you have. The budget is um, is pretty straightforward. Um, basically, the, if you're looking specifically at numbers, you're going to want to look at the far right column on everything because that's the the final adopted <coughs> current fiscal year budget. Now, keep in mind that the actual numbers with uh, regard to revenue can fluctuate because um, it is dependent directly on uh, on new development, new building of, of residential units, whether it's uh, single-family houses or multifamily um, of, of any type. And, and the revenues are actually up a bit more than we expected this year, which is positive, but I, we've, we think it might just be a kind of a short-term burst in some housing because there's some developments that uh, actually went into foreclosure and then sat for a while and then some companies have come back in and picked those developments up and, and have are, are finishing those developments. For example, the, the one, uh, the multifamily housing near the high school, um, you've probably, if you've been by there, you've seen that that's being built out and uh, that causes a kind of an influx in some revenues, which is positive because then it gives us the opportunity. We were just talking a little bit ago about uh, the, the parks SDC are how we build most of our new facilities, our new parks. And um, in fact, that's really our only funding source. And then we try to go out and um, utilize those funds and match those with, with grant funds. And we've been pretty successful in doing that, fortunately. So, um, you know, for example, talking about Building out the Glen Oak Park at some point. That's um, if if our revenue um, infusion continues, we might be able to do that sooner than later. Hopefully, so we'll see how that trend continues. But I just provide that to you for information because uh, it was specifically requested. I think it's nice to have that as a little bit of a refresher. And um, after you've had a chance to look through that, if you have any questions, 
you can uh, let me know, shoot me an email, give me a call, or if you want to talk about that at the next meeting, I'd be happy to do that as well. And then lastly, uh, Brian just asked for an update about the RV Park Master Plan <coughs> process. Um, we've advertised for requests for proposals for, um, for firms or individuals that are capable of, of helping us produce a master plan. And uh, that, so that advertisement is out right now. Uh, it closes at the end of January, and then we'll have a little selection process, and we'll select a, um, a firm that will help us design uh, and redo that master plan. And uh, I know we've had some discussion about um, some involvement from a member or more than one member of a PRAC. I know that Don is interested. He's not here tonight to talk about that, but keep, we'll keep him in the loop. Uh, we've also, we're working on engaging the high school construction group in that whether they can actually sit in and help us with the selection process or not, if time permits or what have you. But um, probably by uh, the end of February, we'll have, uh, we'll have somebody selected that can help us do that master plan, and then we'll, we'll be moving forward in that process. And then on the heels of that, we're going to be advertising for our um, master plan process for both the Glen Oak property as well as for the um, Filbert Run property. So we'll keep you posted on that. That's all I've got. Can I ask a quick question <coughs> without getting into the nitty gritty of these S of this SDC mm -hmm. thing? Um, I'm just looking at the capital outlay <coughs> piece. New construction, the two hundred twenty-five thousand. That's the Rivercrest restroom primarily. Yeah, mostly. Okay. What's the two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollar land? Uh, let's see. Let me get to my budget here. So. Nothing specific. Um, the, the way it works is basically this is um, the, the parks SDCs is its own fund. So the money, any revenue that comes into that is only used within within this fund. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. and unlike, for example, the city's general fund, where every year you have to reallocate. You know, you have to re-request. Um, it just goes back into that. So. Every year we start with a an ending fund balance or a beginning fund balance that rolls over from the last year, um, and we we just kind of estimate and, and plug you know the 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 revenue in has to equal the, the expenditures and revenues have to balance. Mm -hmm. So um, we just put money in as kind of um, you know potential uses. It can be moved around into different line items as needed. But you'll see that um, of our of our budget of $1.13 million, almost half of that is in a contingency. So <clears throat> we don't, some of the stuff we know, like for example, the project, the, the Rivercrest project, we knew we were doing that, and that's a, in a specific line item for the outlay. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the planning stuff, like the, the master plan for Glen Oak that we just talked about would be in, would be in one of those planning line items. And then a lot of it is just, it's plugged in somewhere as okay. a potential. And then, uh, quite frankly, you know, a lot of it is also is just in a contingency fund that <clears throat> if we had an opportunistic project uh, or, or opportunistic land purchase that we wanted to consider, it's, it's there, um, but it isn't, that isn't necessarily for anything in particular. Okay. Slush fund. What? <laughs> Slush fund, yeah. <laughs> Wish. And then as, you know, as we get into, in, in future years, we get into developing parks will allocate those dollars specifically to a, a capital project line item right. to use. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. If there isn't anything else, our next scheduled meeting is February 28th, and the possibility will be some, hopefully, fingers crossed, some interviews to be done before that. And we will revisit our chair position, and we will get into more of the nitty-gritty on the um, Parks Open House day or month mm -hmm. or Saturdays. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. And we'll adjourn the meeting at 8.56. Nice.